Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here with the legend himself, Steve-O. Thank you so much for coming by, man. Well, thanks for having me, uh, Of man. course, stopping by on his comedy tour, coming to a city near you. Check out those dates on his website, steveo.com. Yeah, and it's called the Bucket List Tour. And it is a comedy show, but it's a comedy show about these insanely f***ed up jackass ideas that I never thought I was actually gonna do, but then I thought, you know what, now I'm in my 40s and it's time, it's gonna get creepy to watch me do these stunts, <laughs> so I better hurry up. And so I did all these crazy stunts, I made an act out of it, and then after each bit in the show, I screen yeah. said crazy stunts. Awesome. So it's this multimedia extravaganza, it's a really uh, unique format, and I'm stoked on it. That's awesome, man. Uh, so I wanna go a little bit uh, into the past with the classic Jackass stuff, uh, one especially, I wanted to ask about was the Henry Rollins off-road tattoo. Okay, yeah, I got it right here. Perfect, yeah. So I can't help but notice that this is one of like the few jackass stunts, which at the end you did not seem all that happy. <laughs> you seemed a little bummed. It wasn't that I wasn't happy. I was just so insanely uh, coked out. I, oh, okay. I was doing a ton of cocaine. I thought it was going to be uh, Nikki Six driving this Hummer, and. Um, I had met Motley Crue when I was a little kid by calling every hotel in the Yellow Pages and asking for a room by the name of their manager. It's this whole story. Yeah. So I had a picture of me and Nikki Six, and I showed up just doing lines off of it. I thought he would be like impressed by that or something. And so I'm sitting there like doing coke, and they were like, "Okay, you know, this SUV pulls up." They said, "There's your hero. Go greet him." Oh. And I go over thinking I'm going to meet Nikki Six, and Henry Rollins pops out. And uh, I thought it was, you know, like a prank where they were going to have Rollins beat me up uh, oh. because I, I felt there was uh, some good reason for Rollins to want to beat me up because there's some things that I had said about sharing a lover with him to Howard Stern. <laughs> but uh, Rollins couldn't have been a cooler dude. Okay. He, he could not have been a cooler dude. And uh, I don't think I was unhappy after the bit. I think I got a classic tattoo. Totally. And I was just incredibly high on cocaine. Gotcha. So you don't think Rollins knew about the Howard Stern stuff? If or? he did, he didn't let on. And uh, later he uh, gave an interview for my book, uh, which is called Professional Idiot, a memoir. And you can get autographed copies at stevo.com. Plus, it's got a five-star rating on Amazon, really so you know it's item. a good book. Oh, you read copy. it? Oh, yeah. Dude, you're the man. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I don't know if he did or he didn't, but uh, he was just really cool about it in general. So I want to know, how did Steve-O become a metalhead? Huh. <laughs> I wonder if you're familiar with this quote that I've uh, spat out a million times, that uh, I was 10 years old when I got my first Iron Maiden album. Purely because the cover looked cool. Yeah. It was the number of the Beast album. And uh, listening to it like right away, I discovered that I was a metalhead. Yeah. And then, uh, I want to say it was the next year, later that year, I was 11 when I got my first Motley Crue album, which was Shout at the Devil. And it, it was that, I felt that that showed me why I was a metalhead. Like everything I learned about Motley Crue, they were like, yeah, sleaze and you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll, like just this whole attitude about it. They were like, I didn't think of Iron Maiden as rock stars. I thought of that as like, you know, but Motley Crue, like their whole persona, you know, like their whole attitude. It was just like, ooh, you know, this is something I can really aspire to, like this, you know, it's just rock. So that, that taught me why I was a metalhead. And then I, I was 12, I got my first Slayer album, and that I, I attribute to showing me how bad the situation really was. I was like, okay, wow, you know. That's like, no, I'm, I'm really a metalhead because I just, you know, the rain and blood really did it for me.